Hello, I'm Maruk Said, your microbiology guide. Let's explore in-depth micro techniques and uncover groundbreaking insights together on this educational journey into the fascinating realms of microbes. Paired and sequencing. Explained principle, steps, and applications. Table of contents. Introduction to paired end sequencing. Principle. Types of paired end libraries. Process steps of paired end sequencing. Advantages. Limitations. Applications. Paired end sequencing versus. Single read sequencing. Introduction to paired end sequencing. Paired end sequencing is a next generation sequencing method that sequences a DNA fragment from both ends. This method produces two reads for each fragment, improving sequencing accuracy. There are two types of sequencing reads single read and paired end read. Single read sequencing reads from only one side of a DNA fragment, paired end sequencing reads from both ends of a DNA fragment. Single read sequencing is cost effective and fast, but struggles with accurately sequencing longer DNA fragments and repetitive sequences. Paired end sequencing overcomes these limitations by reading both ends of a DNA sequence. It provides higher sequence coverage and improves accuracy when aligning reads to the genome. This method is effective for detecting structural variants in the genome. It yields better results when studying complex and repetitive genomic regions. Paired end sequencing is most commonly performed on Illumina sequencing platforms. Principle of paired end sequencing Paired end sequencing sequences DNA fragments from both ends in opposite directions. This generates paired end reads that provide more context than single read sequencing. It follows the sequencing by synthesis, SBS principle, where each nucleotide is added and read simultaneously using a fluorescent tag. The process begins with DNA library preparation, where sequencing primers bind to both ends. Unique barcodes or index sequences are added to both ends of the fragments. Identical clusters of DNA fragments are generated on the sequencing flow cell using the bridge amplification process. Sequencing occurs in both directions using the sequencing by synthesis method, where fluorescently labeled nucleotides read the DNA base by base. The sequencing starts by reading the forward strand, producing forward reads. Unique index tags are read to identify which fragment each read belongs to. After forward strand sequencing, the process is repeated for the opposite end. The template is flipped by repeating the bridge amplification step, and the reverse strand is sequenced in the same manner. Finally, Forward and reverse reads are processed and aligned to a reference genome for data analysis. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Thank you for your support. Types of Paired End Libraries Different types of paired end libraries are used for various sequencing needs. Three main types of paired end libraries exist. Simple paired end library. The simplest type of paired end sequencing library involves fragmenting genomic DNA into smaller pieces. Adapter sequences are ligated to both ends of the fragments. Fragments are amplified and prepared for sequencing typically consists of shorter DNA fragments. Mate pair, library, designed for sequencing longer DNA fragments, useful for studying large genomic regions. Long DNA fragments are biotinylated and circularized to form a DNA loop. Circularized DNA fragments are broken into smaller pieces. 
Biotin-tagged fragments are enriched and sequenced to generate mate pairs, beneficial for large-scale genomic projects. Paired End Tag Library uses specific restriction enzymes to generate short DNA tags from each end of the fragment, useful for studying specific genomic regions. Applied in chromatin immunoprecipitation sequencing, chromatin immunoprecipitation sequencing, and other targeted sequencing studies. Process she steps of paired end sequencing. First, DNA, RNA extraction, and library preparation. DNA or RNA is prepared for sequencing. Purified genomic DNA or RNA is fragmented into small pieces. Adapter sequences are ligated to both ends to help fragments bind to the flow cell and provide primer binding sites. Index sequences are added for accurate alignment during data analysis. Adapter ligated fragments are purified and size selected using gel electrophoresis. Fragments are denatured into single stranded DNA and loaded onto the sequencing platform's flow cell. Second, cluster generation. The sequencing flow cell contains lanes with two types of oligonucleotide sequences for hybridization. Single-stranded DNA fragments hybridize to the first type of oligonucleotide. Complementary strands are synthesized, and the original template is removed. Clonal amplification occurs via bridge amplification, where DNA fragments bend and hybridize to the second type of oligonucleotide, forming a bridge. Double-stranded bridges are denatured, producing single-stranded DNA molecules. The cycle repeats to generate millions of identical DNA clusters. Reverse strands are removed, leaving only forward strands for sequencing. Third, sequencing. The sequencing process starts by adding a primer to the forward strands. Fluorescently labeled nucleotides are added one at a time, and fluorescence signals are detected. After sequencing the forward strands, index sequences are sequenced to track red origins. The forward strand is used to regenerate the reverse strand by repeating the bridge amplification process. The forward strand is removed, and the reverse strand is sequenced using a primer. Both ends of the DNA fragment are sequenced, generating paired end reads. Fourth, data analysis. Sequencing data is processed and analyzed. Paired end reads contain sequence information from both DNA fragment ends. Two FASTQ files are generated, one for forward sequence data and overlap information, the other for reverse sequence data. Reads are combined into contiguous sequences and aligned to a reference genome or reassembled de novo. The data is analyzed to identify genetic variations and extract detailed biological insights. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Thank you for your support. Advantages of Paired End Sequencing Provides more accurate results due to increased sequence coverage. Enhances alignment, especially in complex and repetitive genomic regions. Helps detect structural variations such as insertions, deletions, mutations, and rearrangements. Produces reads from both ends, improving alignment quality. Generates more data by providing two reads for each DNA fragment. Limitations of paired end sequencing. More expensive due to additional library preparation steps and computational resources. Requires advanced bioinformatics tools for complex data analysis. Needs more storage capacity to handle the increased data volume. Takes more time compared to single read sequencing. Library preparation is complex and involves multiple steps. 
Long insert paired end libraries may produce chimeric reads, complicating data analysis. Applications of paired end sequencing. Useful for studying large or repetitive DNA regions by linking paired reads. Provides better alignment and fills gaps in a genome assembly, aiding de novo sequencing. Helps detect structural variations that are difficult to identify with other sequencing methods. Detects gene fusions, which occur when parts of two different genes join together, common in cancer and other diseases. Precisely identifies breakpoint regions and fusion junctions. Applied in RNA sequencing to map RNA sequences and identify alternative splicing events, aiding in gene expression studies. Detects epigenetic modifications by mapping reads to specific genomic regions. Used to study histone modifications and DNA methylation, important for disease research. Applied in metagenomics to study microbial communities in complex samples. Paired end sequencing versus single read sequencing. Sequencing method. Paired end sequencing reads a DNA fragment from both ends. Single read sequencing reads from one end only, usually in the five prime to three prime direction. Read output. Paired end sequencing produces two separate reads for each fragment. Single read sequencing generates a single read. Cost. Paired end sequencing is more expensive due to additional sequencing and library preparation steps. Single read sequencing is cost effective as it requires fewer reagents and involves fewer steps. Complexity. Paired end sequencing is more complex but provides higher quality data. Single read sequencing is simpler and less complex. Data quality. Paired end sequencing generates more accurate and high quality data, especially in repetitive or complex regions. Single read sequencing provides good quality for basic studies, but has lower accuracy in repetitive regions. Bioinformatics. Paired end sequencing requires advanced bioinformatics tools and higher computational resources. Single read sequencing is easier to process with simpler computational requirements. Applications. Paired end sequencing is suitable for detecting structural variants, gene fusions, and analyzing complex genomic regions. Single read sequencing is best for specific applications like small RNA seq, chipsec, or basic transcriptomics. Thanks for watching. Check out these recommended videos and keep exploring more exciting content. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.